does he think the race is finished? He thought the race was over. He's made an incredible miscalculation. What did I just do? Was the words running through Alicia Spargaro's mind that day he made a blunder that cost him a MotoGP podium at the Catalonia track in Barcelona? How would a professional rider make such a mistake? Let's find out. It's noteworthy to mention here, though, before we dive in, that Alicia Spargaro won his first MotoGP victory in Argentina for Aprilia. But not only that, he gave Aprilia their first ever win in the Premier class that day. You can tell, even with his blunder he made that day, that his team is all behind their rider with great respect for him. After all, he did take them to victory lane for the first time ever. If you're synonymous with MotoGP at all, then you'll know the name Alicia Spargaro at the MotoGP events. Alish is a famous rider who's raced for several bike manufacturers, such as Pramac Ducati and even Yamaha. His racing career had its ups and downs, but he hung in there and made a name for himself on the MotoGP circuit. Do you know the whole story of what happened that day? Stay tuned to find out what really happened that day to Alish as he approached the final lap. And also, stay tuned to the end to find out some interesting facts about Alish, and very surprisingly, what his favorite color is. Alish admitted that he had sleepless nights after making a blunder that cost him a chance at the podium at the Barcelona MotoGP. He incorrectly calculated the remaining laps at the Grand Prix in Catalonia. He slowed down during the final lap, thinking the victory was his, but that was not the case. It took him to the third turn on his last lap to realize that he'd made a huge mistake and try to correct it as fast as possible to make it to the fifth while he was initially second before making the mistake. After the race, he explained that it was difficult for him to see the pit board and that the sounds from the timing tower at the Barcelona Catalonia circuit had displayed zero, which caused the issue for him. The last lap in Catalonia is shown as a zero and not as one lap remaining. He's not the only rider to have made such a blunder, though. Alex Rins made the same mistake in his Moto3 days, which surely cost him the race, and other names like Julian Simon have lost a winning victory because they thought it was their checkered flag moment. Alicia Spargaro is certainly a famous MotoGP racer. Before making this blunder, he was at the top of his game, and certainly a rider to watch out for in the seasons ahead. Alish is a Spanish MotoGP racer. He was born on the 30th of July 1989. He started his racing career in 2004 when he won the 125 GP Spanish Series, an international FIM CEV championship. He then progressed to do so much more. Alish is an excellent example of someone that took advantage of their chance to achieve great things. He made his first debut in the 2005 World Championships with a 125cc RC3 Honda Seedorf. He was a rookie, but still finished in ninth position out of 16. He changed to the BQR Honda in 2006, but the season was not good for him as he had poor results. Because of this, he could not participate in the 250cc class. He was a replacement for Martin Cardenas, who was bound to the Repsol Honda when it got to round 8. Alesh had good fortune riding on him as he proved he could handle a bigger machine after winning two of the last nine races and then topping a position 19 in Sepang while heading for the previous standings. He was a Blossoms team member for his whole season in 2007, but after he changed to Aprilia, he was not that successful and only made it to position 15 overall. He moved to Lotus Aprilia in 2008 and was always among the top 10 competitors but it was only during the last four races that he could prosper as he managed to be in the top eight, which he had never done before. Sepang then favored him again when he got to fifth place. He aspired to join Team Camp Teller for a while in the third year of the 250 GP, but his career went sideways after the team backed away as the races progressed and Alish had no ride. He later became a test rider for the incoming Moto2 machines and only returned to the 250 GP after missing two mid-seasons, which were for the Balantoring team, and made some progress for his career after he was in position 4 at Assen and position 7 at Session Ring. There was more to come for Alish as he was expected to keep working with Moto2 for the second part of 2010. Still, instead, he got a surprise invitation to be Mika Kallio's replacement for MotoGP, for the team Pramac Ducati at Misano and Indianapolis. After all these events, Alesh finally started his racing career in 2009 and worked with several manufacturers over the years. 
he had trained for a whole winter and was ready for the races, proven when he was in the top 10 in the initial stages of the season in 2010. In Mugello, he was in 8th position, at Le Mans 9th, but his race at Phillip Island is what would be the greatest of his results. In the end, Alej performed well and didn't make a fool of himself while on the bike, which wasn't up to par in the overall competition of the races. Even after being positioned 14 behind Hector Barbera, another Ducati satellite rider, he had more experience than Calio, who was his teammate. But his efforts didn't yield any fruit during the season, as Pramac favoured other riders for 2011, namely Loris Capirossi and Rondi de Punier. 2012 Pons Racing Moto2 Espargaro did not have any other option but to join the Moto2 with the dream that he would be able to follow in the footsteps of Tony Elias to return to the Premier category. He raced with Team Calex for Pons and had difficulty making an impression. His result was inconsistent over the season, with a podium standing at Barcelona and fifth position at Aragon. Both achievements helped him gain fame though in 2011, as he recovered from being beaten by Paul, his younger brother. They had a difference of one point at the end of the season. Roll on 2012 and Alej found himself participating in the MotoGP grid for a project run by Asper. 2012 to 2013, Asper Art CRT. Alej raced with Rondi de Punier, who had substituted him at Pramac and had the advantage of receiving a better machine, CRT. He still had to compete with de Punier for a whole season to ensure he won the CRT title. Punier was leading at the start, but Espargaro proved himself the better rider at the season's end by finishing in the top 10 six times in nine races, giving him the top spot by a significant margin. After beating the 2012 competition and being the first champion, unofficial for Class CR, he held on to his title, and by 2013, it was no doubt that he would stand out as a rider that was moving up the ranks to all other prototype raiders in the qualifying and races. He was in the top 10 over 8 times and had 14 victories out of 18 races, and he finished the season with over twice the points of his teammate. He also scored more points than Andrea Iannone, a prototype rider, and beat him easily. 2014 Forward Yamaha Open Alej could finally ride one of the mighty machines, the Yamaha-powered M1 in 2014. His season for the year was nothing but a breakthrough as he managed to take a second-place podium at Aragon and a first-ever pole position at Assen. 2015-2016 Suzuki His excellent performance in 2014 landed him in his dream factory. He received a contract to ride for Team Suzuki. The significant wins for the Suzuki season were his Catalonia pole position and sixth place during the Aragon races, which were his best. Alish bettered Maverick Vinales, his teammate that year, even with him having three DNFs compared to Vinales, who only had two. It meant he was ahead of Vinales by eight points at the end of the season. The championship put Alish in 11th position, which was lower than the last year by four places, making him feel pressured for 2016. Suzuki was powerful and enhanced in 2016, with Vinales making use of it to have a memorable victory in Silverstone, as he proceeded to position four in the standings. Alish did the best he could that year, and even after finishing in the top place six times, he ended up in 11th position again. Moving on to 2017, he joined Aprilia. Alish joined Aprilia and became part of Team Grassini. He gave Aprilia some good results, including a sixth position in Aragon and Qatar. He gradually proceeded to the front lines and in 2018 was still racing for Aprilia, but he had a challenging beginning before making improvements in the second part of the year. In 2019, he was still racing for Aprilia and received the best result for position 7th on the RSGP that did not favor him. In 2020, he wasn't able to get a similar result in as much as he was one of the regular challengers in the top 10. In the championship, he came in position 17 overall. He kept racing for Aprilia for a fifth season in 2021 and received a reward for his hard work with a well-enhanced RSGP. He made history later on by snatching the Noales squad's MotoGP podium debut in Silverstone. 5 Things You Probably Didn't Know About Alish Espargaro If you didn't already know it, Alish's favorite color is pink. Alish stated that most men wouldn't dare to use it, but it doesn't bother him what the other riders think, and he'll use and wear the color whenever he gets the opportunity in MotoGP. He got the nickname Hippo. His father bought him a hippopotamus teddy bear when he was young 
He slept with it every night and gave it the name Hippo. His friends found out and it stuck with him to this day. He still has his teddy bear. Why he took the number 41 Yoichi Ui was Alicia's favorite fan. To me, he's my hero and that's why I took the number. The Aprilia rider also fancies himself an aspiring chef. He said once in an interview that if given the chance, he would do well if he got the chance to enter MasterChef. He's a fanatic cyclist. Did you know Alish was so close to becoming a professional cyclist? He once said it was like a drug to him, and given the right circumstances and the right time, he wouldn't say no to turning professional. We wouldn't want to see him hanging up his helmet anytime soon, but Alberto Contador in a brief speech said he would have an offer in the coming season 2022 if he wanted. Espargaro married Laura Montero, a girlfriend he had for a very long time after an eight-year relationship. Don't be surprised. They started dating when they were 17. In fact, the relationship has been promised early on at the 2012 Malaysian Grand Prix, but they only got married later in the summer. According to Forbes, IMDb, Wikipedia, and various online sources, his net worth is estimated to be $2 million in his 30s. Mistakes make us human, and Espargaro finally understood this. Will he redeem himself and reclaim his destined position? He is hopeful. Be sure to check out our Moto Plus for more fantastic videos. See you there!